Hello children. Now welcome to our next class. And today we will discuss about the next part of the physical terms. In our previous class, we have stopped the topic at the definition of the amplitude, frequency, time period, and wavelength. Now today we will go for more two quantities that is loudness and pitch. Loudness. What is loudness? It is the intensity of sound. That means if we are speaking loudly or in small pitch or in small intensity, that is decided by this quantity. So the intensity of sound is stopped as loudness. The intensity of sound is known as loudness. Or you will say the measure of the hearing sound is known as loudness. It is directly proportional to the amplitude. That means more the amplitude, more will the loudness of that sound. So loudness decided that how much sound we are getting of that source with respect to the medium of propagation it is measured in decibel its si unit is decibel so whenever we select a musical device or even if whether we prefer a sound for our audible range we look after the what is the decibel of that sound because the decibel helps us to identify sound whether it's a present or it's a repeatable. Next is pitch. What is pitch? The shrillness of sound is known as pitch. The shrillness of sound is, is known as pitch. How much is the pitch? That much is the frequency of that body. So it depends upon the frequency of wave, frequency of sound wave. Here also, more is the frequency, more is the pitch, and vice versa. The pitch of different animal different. Just like the pitch of mosquito is quite more than the pitch of a lion. That's why though the mosquito is very small, but that sound of mosquito irritates much or it produces effect on our ear much more than the sound of that lion. The pitch of girls is more than the pitch of boys. So Pitch and loudness are also the two terms which describes that how much sound or whether the sound is present to us or not. So please write down these two terms. Pause the video and write it down. Okay. Now we'll move for the relation between these physical quantities which we have discussed in our previous video. So the next topic will be relation between frequency, wavelength and time period. The topic will be the relation between frequency, wavelength and time period. What have we calculated about wavelength? It is a separation that's the distance. Time period is the span of motion of the body, oscillating body or vibrating body. And frequency is the nature of motion of that body. How the motion is taking place will be decided by the frequency. So what we have done in our general physics, distance equal to speed into time. So what we let the distance equal to speed into time. The speed is the nature of motion of that waves. 
So this distance can be represented by the wavelength. So you will write wavelength equal to speed. And how time is related with it? How time is related with the frequency? Is the reciprocal of frequency? So we can write in place of that it's one by frequency. So this is the relation we have derived. If we we'll represent by its symbols, then wavelength is denoted by Greek letter that is lambda, L A M B D A, lambda. Speed is denoted by V and frequency is denoted by mu. The symbol V and mu are different terms. Mu is also a Greek alphabet. So, but we have concluded that wavelength equal to V into 1 by mu. This is the relation between frequency, wavelength, and time period. If you have to replace this one, then you can write also in terms of time period. So these are two relations of wavelength, speed, and frequency, wavelength, speed, and time period of the motion of a vibrating body during its oxidation. Let's pause the video and write down the things. Okay. Now we move to the next topic that is the range of sound. We have sound, as earlier we have discussed that sound is measured by decibel or sound is measured by the nature of its frequency. But are we able to listen all type of sound? No. Because we can listen some range of sound. Below that or above that we can't listen. The range of sound which we can listen is known as audible range of human being. So write down the next topic that is a range of sound. Range of sound. Range of sound is the frequency of it. Frequency of it by which it can be judge that sound is audible or not by human being. I have already told that all sound, all range of sound, we are not able to listen. The range of sound which you can able to listen is known as audible range. So how do you define audible range? Audible range, that is the sound waves, sound waves between 20 hertz, hertz is the SI rate of frequency we have discussed in our previous video. The sound waves between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz is known as audible range. Audible range of human being. Now listen this is student. Neither 20 hertz nor 20,000 hertz. It's between of that. That means not everybody can listen the sound between 20 to 20,000 hertz. Somebody can go start from 40 hertz also. Somebody can can't listen the sound up to 18,000 hertz also. These are not fixed, but a common or standard value of this that between these two sound, human being can listen. So that's why it is known as audible range of human being. The next is infrasonic, infrasonic sound waves. Infrasonic sound waves. How that is? The sound waves, the sound waves below, it's less, below 20 hertz are known as infrasonic sound waves. 
Some animal can listen this sound, but we human can't listen this sound waves. That is, infrared radiation are also example of this sound waves. Earlier, infrared was the medium of transfer of data between mobile phone. On that time, the Bluetooth and other type of app were not designed. Two phones are attached with each other, then the data are shifted between one phone to other. But that was removed later on because that's quite risky. But <clears throat> for our knowledge, we are keeping this that the sound below 20 hertz are known as infrasonic sound waves. Next is ultrasonic sound waves. Ultrasonic sound waves. Ultrasonic sound waves, sound waves above. Sound waves above 20,000 hertz. 20,000 hertz are known as ultrasonic sound waves. Again, this sound also we the human being not able to listen. It's above of our listening range. But these waves are used for some scientific process and some animals also detect these sounds. They are using for their own purposes. I'll give the name of or example of these things on my notes. Please write down the things. Okay. Now we'll move to the next one. That is sound propagation. We were discussing in our previous class that sound needs material medium to propagate. Now today I'm asking you to revise the activities given on your book about propagation of sound, that when the sound will be propagate faster, when it will be slower, and there are certain places where sound will not propagate at all. One thing you can do <coughs> that sound needs, sound needs medium to propagate. Medium to propagate. A simple example I am giving you, just you do, try to do today itself. What do you do? You please put your mobile phone in a class or in a tumbler. Make sure there must not be any water on that, otherwise mobile phone may get damaged. So this tumbler is there. Now you put your mobile phone there. You put your mobile phone there. Okay. After that, you ring to this phone from another phone or you ask your friend to ring on it and just try to listen the ringtone. You keep it on the mode of ringtone. Don't keep it in silence or vibration. Try to listen the ringtone. You will able to listen the ringtone. Now next time what you do, you put your hand here or put some little heavy material over it and just try to keep over it. Now this time, you once again you will ask your friend or you will yourself ring to this phone by another phone and try to listen the sound. What you will get? Definitely the intensity of sound coming up the ringtone of that mobile phone has decreased. Why? Because this time we have covered this class. So the air from this inner part to our part is not exchanging. So the ringtone is same place. The sound is coming out but the sound is not coming to this area where you are listening the sound. So what will happen? The intensity of sound has reduced. Which proved that sound needs medium to propagate. If we have some mechanism to make entire air of this out by certain process, we are taking out all the air, we are taking out all the air by certain process, then what will happen after some time if this area will block, after some time, the same phone will be ringed by the other phone, will not able to listen the sound. But we can see the light of the screen is raising. That means the call is active, but sound is not coming. So which proves sound is medium to propagate. The place where there is no material medium are known as vacuum. So in case of vacuum, sound does not propagate because sound needs material medium to propagate. So please write down each and everything, whatever I have written in the board and also I have provided you the notes today in the morning. So please see it, write on your copy and try to see the video two or three times. I am sure that the things will be clear to you. Thank you.